So a young activist named Magnolia Mead saw Joe Manchin in public, and she did what any good citizen who's concerned with the survival of the human race would do. She confronted him because he's one of two senators standing in the way to any progress when it comes to climate change. And this is a time where scientists are practically begging lawmakers to begin the transition to clean, green, renewable technology. And you have just two people standing in the way. Joe Manchin is one of them. Now, Joe Manchin doesn't care that the world is burning because he's a coal baron and he still feels as if there's more money to be made off of destroying the planet. So Magnolia knows this and she decided to confront him about this and actually specifically call him out on him being a coal baron. This is absolutely phenomenal. Take a look. The report, the planet is warming. And if we don't, if we don't keep it under 1.5 degrees, New York City is going to go underwater. Your state is going to go underwater. I'm not going to be quiet. I've listened to you enough. I've heard you own a coal plant, and you will never represent your constituents fairly because all you care about is your greed, your corporate greed. I'm a student activist. I am terrified about my future. I'm terrified that my family. I'm terrified that my family is going to die. I'm terrified. I'm terrified that my family is going to die from the climate crisis. Good on her. Good on you, Magnolia, if you're watching this. That was really encouraging to see. Basically, if you see Joe Manchin or Kirsten Cinema, you have a responsibility to confront them. They should be ashamed to show their faces in public because what they're doing, them being obstacles to just a little bit of progress when it comes to climate change, that could spell doom for all of humanity. The United States, I, there's no reason why we shouldn't be a global leader when it comes to clean, green, renewable technology, solar, wind, hydro, but we're not because of corrupt ghouls like Joe Manchin. So I really, you know, uh, commend her for doing that. Now, it was kind of difficult to hear, so I did transcribe uh, some of this. So he told her to be quiet, but thankfully she refused. And she said this, she said, I'm not going to be quiet. I've listened to you enough. We all have. I heard you own a coal plant and you will never represent your constituents fairly because all you care about is your greed. Damn, that is awesome to hear. I, I mean, Joe Manchin is so shamelessly, cartoonishly corrupt that I don't know how he can look anyone in the face. But he looked her in the eyes and he said, I don't own a, co a coal plant. Excuse me, you don't own a coal plant? What? It's not just an egregious lie, but he has used his political career to pad his own pockets to benefit his own coal company. Just a couple of days ago, the New York Times released a bombshell study about the ways he specifically used his political career to make his coal company more profitable, to benefit himself. And yet he's gonna say he doesn't own a coal company. Now, the uh, New York Times article that I'm referencing is locked behind a paywall, but I do wanna go to a summary from Salon because it breaks it down. And the level of corruption here I mean, you can't not deduce after reading this that Joe Manchin should spend the rest of his life behind bars. That's how corrupt he is. Meryl Fair of Salon explains, Senator Joe Manchin, the most prominent decision maker on American energy and climate policy, has spent decades raking in revenue from his private coal business. A recent investigation by the New York Times illustrates what's been described as a stunning portrait of political corruption, detailing how the conservative Democrats' political decisions have benefited his financial connection to a West Virginian power plan, calling into question the ethical law Line the senator is towing between business and politics. Manchin's involvement with the Grant Town power plant began in 1987 when he helped clear several environmental obstacles that allowed two developers to build the plant slightly outside Manchin's district. The Environmental Protection Agency was concerned the plant was too close to another coal burning plant in the area, which could potentially produce disastrous impacts. The Democrat then went into business with the plant through a handful of shifting electricity companies and contracts, which the Times describes as a a bit like handling a set of Russian nesting dolls. A company owned by Manchin provided the Grant Town plant GOB, an acronym for Garbage of Bitumenis, a mining byproduct of coal and rock which can be used to produce electricity. The Grant Town power plant has been the only customer for over 20 years, so a portion of the plant's electricity revenue, which comes from the electric bills paid by Manchin's constituents, goes directly into the senator's pockets. Because GOB is less energy efficient than pure coal, West Virginians have lost millions of dollars in excess electricity 
electricity fees over the years. The Times investigation highlights how Manchin's political agenda has aided the power plant over the years. Reporting reveals that Manchin championed tax credits that aided the plant and was involved in enabling a rate increase that hiked electricity prices for West Virginians, therefore benefiting himself economically through the plant's increased revenue. Manchin has also been a vocal dissenter of the Environmental Protection Agency's proposed limits on power plant emissions. So we're not just talking about a simple conflict of interest here. We're talking about Joe Manchin literally using his political career to benefit his company and himself, all to the detriment of humanity. So sorry, Magnolia, you do have to be afraid that your family will die due to a climate disaster because Joe Manchin is a coal baron and he still wants to make more money from dirty energy. So sorry, we all have to suffer because of this one ghoul who should be in prison because of how corrupt he is. And that article doesn't even take into account the cronyism with regard to his family and the way that his uh, political career helped his family. It's truly disgusting. But that's the state of American politics, where you have politicians so corrupt, they don't care that their corruption could literally lead to the demise of humanity and end the habitability of the one planet that we have access to. He doesn't care. He wants to make money short-term profits above the long-term survival of our species. So good on Magnolia for confronting him, but unfortunately, I, I think he's been confronted enough to where if that would have moved him, something would have changed by now. But he doesn't care that he's the one obstacle. It's gross. It, it, I don't even know what to say about it, but that's where we're at. So, you know, okay, if he's not going to budge, then the least that we can do is make his life a living hell. When you see him in public, confront him, Thank him for causing the demise of humanity, potentially. Let him know that, you know, he's going to be looked at as a villain throughout history if we're able to survive. But, you know, these politicians, they, they couldn't care less. They are sociopathic. I don't think that Joe Manchin is even having trouble sleeping at, at night. I, I just, I don't think that. They're so cartoonishly corrupt and evil that I don't think he cares at all. It's just about money. So, yeah, good on Magnolia. Uh, these things need to be celebrated because if we can't get them to budge when it comes to policy, at a minimum, we can make their lives at least a little bit more inconvenient. And that is something that I find at least some enjoyment from. Were you acting like a beta, 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 beta.